Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Hi everyone, welcome to The Advocate and to a lineup of robust and rigorous discussions on the issues that matter to all of us. I'll be setting things off by flagging off the failure of global leadership in the eye of the COVID-19 storm. We'll go virtual as Chuka joins us via Skype to discuss survival as an imperative for change. Survive or perish could be the slogan. I cannot take a look at the herd mentality from an entirely new perspective. Either way, we don't seem to be going far from the COVID cloud. Uche makes an e-jump and appears just in time to remind us of the law of basic instincts that essentially says a hungry man is indeed a very angry man. Liberus drives home Uche's point in a manner of speaking. He holds up the vision that COVID-19 that COVID is bringing out the best in us. Talk about worst case scenarios. So that's the size of the package on this edition. So sit back, it's time to unpack the parcel after this break. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. A report card is useful only when the recipients are willing to learn from the mistakes. So today, my advocacy is on the failure of global leadership and the case of economic pandemic, which is, you know, as a result of this COVID-19 uh, coronavirus that's sweeping the whole world. This is not going to be a popular opinion, but I firmly believe that the looming global economic crisis due to the coronavirus pandemic is self-inflicted. I mean, look, this is totally due to the breakdown in global leadership. The world is so deeply connected and, in, and interdependent that no nation, no matter how big or great, can afford to be great again alone. Indeed, from 2015 to 2018, in fact, up to this very moment, we've been witnesses to a rise of nationalist demagogues rising to power all over the world, from Europe to Americas and to Latin America. Politicians whose only claim to power was either to deal with corruption make their country great again, Brexit out of Europe, or get immigrants out. Beyond these, most of these politicians had no other pedigree or competency. In fact, most competency was completely antithetical to their success. They continue to wing their way to political successes. Now, COVID-19, however, requires cool measures, and indeed cool measured hand to steer the ship. The Chinese government, on the other hand, is not totally without blame for the early denial of this virus and their reaction towards the epidemic. However, whilst we must commend their later actions in containing the virus, the horses have already left the van. Indeed, it's been reported that whilst China had full lockdown of Wuhan, it however still allowed travel from Wuhan to other parts of the world, and this seemed to have helped in the spread of the virus. In Europe, especially the United Kingdom and Italy, the, their most cherished freedoms that citizens are used to enjoying provided a weak link which allowed many people to continue to live their lives as normal, 
with travels to and from China and elsewhere. In the United States, which had used to be the world's global policeman and global leader, the age of Trump, however, seemed to have uh, trumped all that. They seemed to focus all their attention in making America great and forgetting that diseases have no borders or barriers, especially in the age of global businesses and jet travel. In my view, the U.S., which used to be the global leader and used to set an example of how countries should get together and fight a global epidemic, abdicated its role, whilst China played ostrich. The role played by previous U.S. presidents is very, quite clear, from George Bush, uh, Mr. Obama, um, in helping to fight previous global uh, crisis from the 2008 economic crisis to the uh, other pandemics which we've had in 2008, 2009. So here we are today. Without clear remedies, without global leadership, without the support of other nations, without deep coordination, multilateral responses, clearly the world will suffer as we're suffering today. Indeed, we saw stories of U.S. governments allegedly hijacking medical equipment <laughs> that were supposed to go to other countries. Um, and this is not how you fight a global epidemic. So now we're in a situation where it's every, it appears at least, to be every country for itself. And that's not going to work. So this is no way to defeat a deadly viral pandemic, which knows no borders or respects race or ethnicity or the size of your bank account or where you're from. It is a time for regional and global leadership and solidarity. It is the human race which is under attack, and we must come together as one to win this war. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I have to start by saying I agree with you. Um, I don't think it's going to be an unpopular view, despite what you say. But where I may sort of tweak it slightly is to say, I mean, I wish Uche were here. Because, well, she's here, but she's not physically yeah. here because you, you put her man on the block, uh, <laughs> Trump. Yeah, she may have a thing or two to say about that. But I, I just feel maybe we're looking at, we're blaming the current crop of leadership too much because as far as I can remember, we've always had issues of leadership. So you could say that the current, do you say, nationalist uh, crop are as a result of a backlash against the liberals. You know, we, people had had their fill of liberal governments like you know, Obama and people, and they felt that the, the boundaries were being too blurred. So, you know, a man can be a woman, all these, kind of, all these advocacies that didn't go, so they wanted to go back to basics. They wanted to reclaim the conservative truths that they knew and understood. So in a way, you sympathize. So it, they were backed by popular demand almost. So yeah, you, know, you can go back as far as communist eras where you had several governments that were you know, the ruling by you know, various ideologies that didn't quite work in favor of the common man. So I don't think you can stop at identifying that we have a crop of leadership that are maybe going in one direction. But I do agree with you, though, that the only way out of this, and I like the way you ended, is to say we must see that this is us against the virus and yeah. not us against ourselves, or we're going to get into a lot of trouble before we get out. You know, and, and I like the fact that you look at regional and national and global, because from, from whether it's our local governments to anybody who is taking the, the lead now must understand that it's not about them, but about the people around them. No, but the, the, the difference is that, um, from your position, Ikene, is the fact that um, from what I think America is saying is, if these leaders had taken time decisions, yeah. we probably would have gotten where to are, no, where we are I today. Agree with that, yes. If China had admitted from the onset, and while you're locking down Wuhan, there shouldn't be uh, ingress and egress. Yes. And, and so, and nobody would have been able to leave Wuhan or take the disease or the virus from yes. Wuhan to yes. other part no, of the country. Right. Mm. If America had taken the decision to lock down America when they needed to, they wouldn't have had the influx of the virus, you know, that they have today. If Nigeria had taken this decision to lock down the country when we needed to lock down, because we kept dilly dallying, uh, um, you, you know. So, but for me, I. I so I, let me I, just interject a bit to say yes, I agree with you. But my point being that the only reason we didn't expose the other eras, their leadership, is because they never faced a COVID. No, they did. No, no, they faced. You know, the, we, ha we had the bad crisis. flu. The H5N1. I, okay. and, and their decisions were what saved oh, yeah. the day. Yeah, I, yes. I think, yes, there was, there, was, yes. there was global leadership at that point in time. Look, and they were, in much, they were um, acting in much more quickly. Yes, let me, yes. Let me, okay. let me finish, please. Yeah. Do you know that if we had locked down, let's take Nigeria for example, if we had locked down Nigeria when we needed to, there wouldn't have been any need locking down Lagos or asking people to stay at home mm. because we would have remained in Lagos and do our business or how we needed to do it. Yeah. Or you take the step, a uh, uh, decision of what Tanzania had done, knowing fully where that you already have it, mm. you now 
uh, uh, create a strategy where people who are coming in will be forced to quarantine, quarantine, not self quarantine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a facility Imposed, yes. to quarantine them for 14 days before you. But our borders were open. The same thing with US. The same thing with Europe. Yeah. And and so and then the same denier from China. And so by the time it became full blown. You know, even the World Health Organization kept denying, yes. no, it's not yet um, a pandemic. We should not, um, uh, uh, they shouldn't be, there shouldn't be panic. And now we have more deaths in our hands. And so that's basically for me. If, okay, maybe, maybe I mean, if I'm, I'm those, trying to say there's nothing the new under the sun. If and, and, the decisions sure that, are, the that leaders are taking now, mm. if they had taken those decisions, mm -hmm. okay. Timeously, we won't have gotten to where we are now. Because at the end of the day, they've taken the same decisions. Yes. You know, they were scared to lock down yes. countries, but at the end of the day, they ended up locking them down. Okay, okay. But yet, and I agree with you completely, now the, the problem is, is with us. Mm. It shouldn't be a question of uh, can African cope or can this cope? And then I don't like this attitude of using one method to, to one solve size the problem. Fits all. Yeah. Yes, it, sh it shouldn't be a one size fits all, too. Mm. And let the world come together. These leaders need to come together and know that it's about saving humanity. Yeah, but, but I think, Emeka, you, do you get what I'm saying in the sense of saying there's nothing new under the sun? It's not like these are the worst leaders ever. We've always had leaders no. who have self-interest. Um, um, Is it that we had more of other leaders who had more common sense balancing well, out uh, yes, the Yes, I, I think so. I think, mm -hmm. I think you, you, this whole thing starts from a point of a mindset. You have these leaders who thought, you know, what, what was their entire focus was their, their own self first, their country. Take Trump, for example. Yes, and so they didn't care he's much. He's much concerned about his second yes. term. Yes, we live in we live in an age of global coordination. Yeah, diseases travel, so you know you cannot isolate a country. So um, here we are. Distance is no obstruction, especially when connecting with a kindred spirit. Time to hook up with my homeboy Chooks. Why am I calling him Chooks? Hello, Chuka. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder why you're calling me that exactly. <laughs> Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's it, really it does, it does. It does. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Oh, hi, Mecca. Hello, advocates. Certainly, distance is no obstruction if you are a creature of survival like us. You merely adapt. A change for survival. Life will be entirely different after the COVID-19 pandemic abates. This has been an ongoing experience like no other. Not even Ebola was this fearful. The statistics show that deaths are still a small percentage of the afflicted. But the majority of cases so far have been in developed countries. And they, more so than others, are better equipped to handle the pandemic. In Nigeria, they show us beds, but without ventilators. What's the use? We do not even have the staff, the doctors, the nurses, to deal with the pandemic, should it manifest here. Already, very poor Nigerians have started to worry about survival in the period of lockdown. They have come out to hawk stuff to try to make money. They have also come out to protest. Ironically, this is when our legislators have taken delivery of brand new cars for themselves. Yet, we have not built new meaningful health centers in decades. Schools and universities are now trash, and with the shutdown of educational facilities, children will bear the brunt of the dislocation that will be the resultant effect of all this. They will be stunned by the neglect, greed, and carelessness that their forebears have exhibited businesses will collapse, never to regain position. The oil industry has been decimated. Many will lose their lives. We must now prepare for a brave new world, one in which we must make sense of our development goals, one where we must get rid of the present crop of selfish people 
will present themselves for governance. And we must make this a deliberate change to survive. Thank you for your advocacy. We just want to, I want to just tease it out a bit, you know, and, and try and understand okay. the thrust of it. Essentially, what you're saying to me is survival of the fittest may well emerge as a result of people not doing what they ought to have done on time. So you may now find people as a, because they want to survive at all costs, having to take the bull by the horns at the grassroots. Am I getting you right there? Um, a little bit of that. Basically, it's more to do with uh, changing how we, how we vote, how we elect people, um, how we do things, so that we begin to make progress. It's clear that we've made no progress for 60 years, and now we're cut out. Um, I mean, now we're, I mean, if you notice, recently everything the presidential task force has been doing is basically thanking all sorts of people for contributing. So I wonder, doesn't the government have its own money? You know what I mean? It's The task force just keeps telling us about thank you to the UN, thank you to WHO, thank you to everybody that's been given money or ventilators from China and this and that. Nothing has been mentioned about what Nigeria is actually spending on its own to get things right. Apart from, of course, the money they say they give to the people who are very poor. I, I have you know, otherwise, not, they seem to just be thanking everybody else. That means that were we, not, we were not in a position to do anything. I have a, I mean, just, just to think about it. I mean, um, it's yes. good that we, 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 the point you make is it's, it's very valid. Uh, in, 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 and it's, it's a consequence. What we're, what we're seeing as the consequences of the actions or inactions or actions that we failed to take over the years. But I think one yes. sole point about uh, what I do feel my own perspective about this, though, is it's, it's, it's also about the, the actions we are now taking to fight this, yes. which is this thing of right. national lockdown, which yes. we haven't modeled. There's no scenario. We sort of seem to have copied copy and paste, yes. uh, copied what they're doing in <laughs> Europe and, and just pasted it. We haven't quite, yeah. you know, it just, I don't think it's, around. yes, it's not based on any, any well thought out model or analysis to say this will happen if we have moderate lockdown, partial lockdown and full lockdown. Uh, this is, is yes. saying, yes. look, schools are shut, you are going to have distorted calendars. Mm. Businesses are, some businesses are going to fold up whether you like it or not. No. As we speak now, some yeah, people can't true. pay salaries. Um, the oil pr price is nose diving. And, and so at the end of the, it all, the people, if the people do not rise to think of how right. do we as a people, you know, begin to mm -hmm. change the narrative. Because if you wait for this government, because while this is on, that was when the National Assembly member, the House of Rep particularly, took delivery <laughs> of... 20 million per car vehicles. So even if it's loan, you don't begin to wonder. And yet these are people, this is a federal government that is expecting money from donors to combat the city at home, to give palliative. And so it is not enough for people to sit down, fold their hands and say, oh, look, we'll probably be back to business as usual when all of this is over. Yes. There are a lot of things that are going to be happening. Some people... Are, a lot of people will sell some of their properties. Some will have to relocate, you know, from the cities <laughs> to the villages. I, so all of this, if the government need to begin to imagine, I, I, I think, I think, you know, all of this that will so happen I, after the I think lockdown. it was it was Albert Einstein that said one of his famous quotes, something about, you know, it's not his, his greatest asset is not his ability to read books or understand books or. It is his imagination. Okay. Yes. And 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 so right. what we see here clearly. Is, is a failure of imagination. Yeah, yeah that's true. Uh, in terms okay, of imagining yeah. what these Scenario, different scenarios yeah. and what the impact will do will yeah. be and how we as a government, as a people, should manage this. But, but let, so, me, let me even take now, it back. Sorry, okay. Okay. No, go on. For now, we seem to be very happy. You know, let's lock down, lock down, lock down, share. We, we, we talked about it. 2.5 million. Mm. Let's assume they will give 20,000 naira to 2.5 million people. Now you add one million people more in a population of 200 million where right. you, you have your people, about 75% of your people live below you know, $2 a day. And then you have about 65% yeah. of these same people who do not have access to clean water. You know? and, and yet, you're talking about giving palliative to 3.5 million persons. 
the, the palliative right. that we're talking about can barely even stretch them for the 14 days that you're talking about. And then so companies Correct. are folded. Some of them are not producing. Some of them won't pay salaries. And so if they don't pay salaries, some of the people that you felt could afford, you're going to pull, pull, pull them down, mm -hmm. you know, the poverty level further down. And then when you come, most of these funds you have spent, because of the price of oil, being a mono economy, because of the price of oil to regain this fund will be a, a big problem for you. Some of these states are already battling to pay salaries. And so you're still going to have a situation where salaries are going to be old. So without, all, federal government is not imagining this. Yeah. So there's need for the people to sit down and say, we got to where we are because the, the previous leaders and the current ones are fed us. And if we consistently fold our hands, Heaven bless us, this is just one. Yeah, I mean, what yeah, if another I, one I, 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 Taking it from what you said, I think um, sometimes the impression we give is that we want to reap where we didn't sow, even as a people. Are we saying that we're surprised that we're seeing what we're seeing? It's like a report card. If you don't study, why are you expecting mm -hmm. to get an A? So you have a group of people who consistently have shown themselves not only to be lacking in competence, but not even the interest, the will to do the right thing. The so now you come, you have something like COVID-19. Sorry, Chuka, you're, you're, you're in there. You have something like corona, coronavirus, yeah. and it's like a report card period. And we're seeing it manifest that they don't have the capacity to think or to come up with genuine solutions. But when you have people like Ihe Kwazu who are competent, you're seeing that they also are shining, even though they're constrained by the apparatus around them. So you do have a few people who are showing some spark of genius, but they're only doing that because they already had it. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. you, you can't give what yes. you don't have. Uh, Chuka, you want to say something? No, just saying, I was, just, I was, when you were talking, I realized that when you were talking about um, they don't have the capacity, and I said, yes, that's the imagination Emeka was talking about. They don't have any imagination. So they've copied and pasted, and nothing really. In, okay, in the UK now, they, they say once the prime minister is back, or even before he comes back, uh, they're going to ask him that, look, what's the exit strategy? For the lockdown. In other words, they want to come out of lockdown. Yes. So when you can you imagine that exit being strategy here. what is your exit strategy? Yes. Already. But when you ask with, you know, for exit strategy here, they will, yeah. uh, will take it from the political prism first. Oh, yeah. he is criticizing the president. <laughs> or he does not yeah. uh, he, you have not even thanked government for what they are doing. And what here you done. are asking yes, for exactly. You know, I um, we cannot if uh, if this thing goes beyond what we already have, it's difficult I think, to be difficult I think to manage. This whole thing, in, so, my, in my view, is is move the lockdown, so-called lockdown or whatever, move it from a, a, a lockdown to a an information community participation kind of thing. You take this thing down to the various high-risk communities. You identify who, where those high-risk communities are, and you find a system of mitigating and managing them and providing this. So for example, people who cook, let's, say, let's take Agege, for example. There's, there's a bakery there, so people are suffering. Get two, three bakeries to, to still operate and provide bread for people. And, and Get why, water, if there are water pumps there, to provide water. That's why for me, you know, So I you think, work it from a community perspective. Yes, it has give to them, be. Give them opportunities to be part of it. That's why I had consistently insisted that this approach of using one medicine to cure all will not work. All I can say is thanks, Chuka, for making time to drop in on us VIP style. I'll be taking things up after the break. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Okay, I'm going to be talking about herd immunity. Ironically, this period of social distancing and self-isolation rather than being solitary, has led to an intrusion of mass uninvited male. 
video messages and posts, everyone vying for attention and just a few seconds to influence our thinking and sway us to thinking their thoughts. Why the noise and clamor for space in our already crowded heads? Why the incessant competition for attention? Never has social media seemed such a nuisance. It's against this backdrop that I lodge this warning. Beware herd mentality. We must fight to hear ourselves think and to determine what we're convinced about. Herd mentality is a reflex whereby we resend, like or allow to have sway in our minds the thoughts and opinions of others without first interrogating them to determine their value. I believe that it is this follow follow to use Nigerian speak that has retarded our growth in nationhood here in Nigeria. This preference to dobale before a mentee or to rush to seek covering beneath an intermediary rather than to think and speak for ourselves. We would rather let others speak for us even when they're compromising our voice and integrity. At this time, the world is faced with a pandemic which has brought up the concept of herd immunity. This happens when enough people are exposed and build up a resistance to the virus in an organic way. I want to use this concept in a creative way. So I recommend that what is needed now is an individual immunity to herd mentality, immunity from the herd influence. Therefore, we each need to develop herd immunity, I hope you get that, such that you and I can be in the midst of a group but still maintain the veracity of our unique voice. This not only ensures that we bring something authentic to the whole, but keeps the whole sincere in its mission through interrogation and dialogue. To do that, we must first make time to reflect and develop our own thinking. We need to ask ourselves questions. Why do I believe what I believe? Rather than running away from our own shadow and seeking solace in the crowd. As one maverick thinker once said, the greatest threat to freedom is the absence of criticism. I agree. I think I agree with that. Um, uh, first and foremost, I okay. would say that for some time now, I have tried um, to stay away from, um, I've maintained social distance. And um, so my social distancing also includes, um, you know, um, online platforms. <laughs> well done to you. <laughs> yeah, because um, you find out that everybody has something to say. Mm. Uh, this is the time where news, uh, you know, are no longer verified. Uh, people just push it down to you. You keep your phone for, let's say, 10 minutes. The next thing you come, you get about 100 and something sure. messages. Um, and, you, you know, so sometimes the messages are so conflicted. Some, some of them outright... Um, mischievous and then the person is asking you please can you confirm this <laughs> you, you know so so what like i do they can't think for themselves yeah I, I i i i they know that this news but so as not to be seen to be peddly fake news you okay. say so oh, please confirm okay. Okay. you know <laughs> and and so i try as much as i can and everybody also seems to have a cure you know apart from those who are saddled with the responsibility almost everybody seems to have a cure and almost every a lot of people also in nigeria seems to know the problem mm -hmm. some will tell is malaria jesus just come on malaria mm -hmm. you know and all of, so um that's why i agree with you that in all of this we should maintain not just maintain your sanity also you know stand out from 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 the crowd but it's always very difficult to stand out at times like this and um, because of so 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 many reasons one being that um, you can be overwhelmed with what is happening around you. I almost got overwhelmed too, but you know, I, I still maintain and I insist that I will try as much as I can, you know, to stand up. Let me say that I think that um, you know, this is uh, we've often talked about this thing, uh, the confidence of technology uh, in the mobile phone, giving everybody a voice, and everybody wants to be heard mm -hmm. and broadcast, uh, and broadcast mm -hmm. you know. I mean, personally, I've had to remove myself from so many groups. Groups. Correct move. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, for me personally, I'm not a person. I, I, maybe even in our own group, you notice I'm not a. Yep, an active uh, yeah. member. I prefer one on one communication. Yes. Um, you know, because uh, a lot of people, when I remove myself from my old school groups, ah, Mika, what do you do? I'm like, it's too much information. Mm. I wake up, you know, this, uh, this person said this, oh, this person is dying, or this information. I can't deal with that. Um, so I've had to take myself off. Um, also because you have to make that effort on a personal level, as, as, as liberals have said, to, to either limit your, the access to the information you have yeah. or limit yourself from being even where those information are shared. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because otherwise you get drowned in, in that information. And, and this thing you talked about, herd immunity, and, mm. and it's not... So this is, for me, 
Um, it's like being a leader, having you know people psychophants around him. Mm. Even yeah. the best of leader, mm. if yes. he hears every morning, oh, you are That's excellent, so you are excellent, <laughs> you are excellent. He is going to be infected by that, yeah. by that noise. Yeah. No matter how good that person is. So you have to be deliberate in choosing the kind of people around you. Mm -hmm. You know, um, otherwise, y y even your own voice will be drowned out. You'll yes. find that the more you, you hear, won't discover this, your you won't discover you. You will wear yeah. out, you'll yeah. burn out. Yeah. Because yeah. in some situations, you are you are trying too hard to make people see reasons why yeah. they shouldn't do what they're doing. Mm. It's like you are the lone voice. And in the no, but environment... But you the opposite, if I get him right. Like if you don't get people who are clashing with you from time to time, and everybody is saying, Ogasa, oh, well done, I agree with no, you. Well, that's you will lose your No, that's why I'm coming to mm. a situation where you are in an environment where you are the lone voice, mm. trying to tell them, make them understand that, no, I am not the spirit that you think I am. But, ah, oh, no, Oga, without you, okay. this country can't move yeah. forward. Yeah. Oh, I see. Without you, okay. things yeah. cannot be like this. Mm. Thank God so for you. you. Yeah. Thank God for bringing somebody like mm -hmm. you. So when they praise, worship you like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. it gets to it's a point when somebody now comes to challenge you. You think they're the enemy. You think he's the Straight, enemy. Yeah. You, and you know, and, and so they will also say that that person, that person you know, to, to use your analogy of a herd, like yes. a virus, they will, yes. they will form an attack and attack that yes. person. The, the antibody. Say, yes. <laughs> and, and now you see, and say, everybody that seems to be is creating a, is a virus. groups. Yes. Yeah. Everybody seems to be creating group. And if you belong to about 10 platforms, mm -hmm. there is one information, maybe yeah. a Bola Met Tinubu issued, a, a, or somebody issued a letter mm -hmm. in his name. And then... Okay. Because it resonates with, you know, the people, mm. you'll find out that more than 10 people will share that document yes. in those 10 platforms, yes. 10 different yes. times, not minding you whether you belong, it, yeah. and whether you belong. Mm. And then you find out when somebody now comes to say, no, this didn't come ah. from this leader. Mm. Nobody took time to verify. Okay. You know, but since it resonated, that's why some people can even mischievously create a, a letter, put a Kenes name there because mm. a yeah. Kenes somebody. Sell market. Yes. <laughs> that if you're not careful, you find yourself, you know, and then you find yourself drowned in, in that, in the mix. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm time. very passionate about this advocacy is that I've always loved when I come into a group and I hear dissenting voices. I find it refreshing. You know, even when the person is being rude. I find it refreshing because I think for you to say we're singing in can soprano I, and I someone tell, sings in alto, can I, tell you guys I like it. A small story, okay, uh, but a very important. But I, story. I notice it's not very popular um, in, in my in people. my public life. I used to have this woman who was my director in Lagos when I was heading the uh, uh, female agency, female censorship board. Bless her, she's late now. Um, she was an assistant director, um, and then in in meetings, staff meetings, everyone was, I, I, I come up with a, some policy, some ideas. Ah, yes, sir, DG, da 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 da. And then she would say, hmm, 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 did you? I'm not interested, it's not true. You know, she was, and you know, because she was an assistant director, the director was like, no, this, 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 you're talking to the DGs. And she said, no, no, sir, they won't tell you the truth, I'll tell you the truth. Uh -huh. But everybody would crowd her, on her. And, but I gave her the space to be able to give me information yeah. that was actually very vital. And I found that, that over time, her, you know, her opinions, was more important spot to on. me, was yeah. spot on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, just as we provide constructive criticism through our advocacy, so we rely on your feedback to offer the same for us. On the matter of returning Nigerians behaving badly, Eseka Chinyam says, but through this time of lockdown, Nigerian police, they're doing anyhow. On COVID-19 and leadership, Kinsley Mwigwe says, the travails of an Igbo man in Nigeria, none of us were given the opportunity to choose exactly which tribe or race he or she would like to be born into. However, I was born an Igbo man, and I have no regret or apology to tender, to render to anyone over my identity. Well, Kinsley, we're glad you're Igbo and proud, but uh, let's make our various identities work positively for us and for Nigeria. Kemuel W says, the middle class in Nigeria has been reduced to TV hosts and talk shows only. Instead of them to take the front stage of protest against the irregularities and government impunity, they're waiting for the uneducated poor masses. Shame on all of you. Kemuel W, I assume you're referring to us. However, whether you agree or not, talk will always be part and parcel of protest, so keep watching. Okay, thank you for your feedback. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, 
Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Uche speaks of a matter of advocacy that points to when the rubber hits the road. Stay tuned. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Hi fellow advocates, one thing that goes without saying at this time is that we're all in it together. A hungry man is an angry man. The Nigerian government announced that Lagos State, Ogun State and Abuja will be on lockdown for two weeks and that the most vulnerable will be given palliatives to help sustain them during this period. We were informed during the president's broadcast that the poor would be given 20,000 naira each, among other things. Two weeks later, I'm yet to hear that anyone has received this money. Prior to the lockdown, Nigeria was already teetering on the brink with a very high rate of unemployment and insecurity engulfing the nation. Nigeria was described as the poverty capital of the world that should tell you how bad things were then. With the arrival of the coronavirus pandemic and the proposal of a lockdown, it was extremely vital that we got access and distribution of palliatives right. But it seems that this has not been the case, and now we have an even bigger insecurity problem on our hands. In the last two weeks, I have seen lots of videos with citizens crying out for food, light and monetary assistance. Many have taken to the streets to protest and latest reports confirm that armed robberies are on the increase as people have become desperate. Many youths now line the roads, defying the lockdown and begging for money. Many estates have had to step up their security to keep the impending siege at bay. Even the security operatives manning the lockdown are also begging. A few days ago, we received news that the lockdown will be extended indefinitely or for as long as is necessary. I can appreciate the need for the extension, but it also strikes fear in my heart. If these mega palliative measures don't get to the vulnerable immediately, it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that we're sitting on a time bomb which will explode at any moment. A clear system of identification and distribution needs to be put in place and all monies must be accounted for. We all know that a hungry man is an angry man. If we don't take care of our poor, then we all become targets in their quest to survive. So my point is, I think, um, I, I, um, which, which is advocacy actually speaks to the earlier point we raised during the um, earlier discussions about um, how the government is, didn't really think this thing through in terms of the lockdown, because people are getting really angry. And people are getting angry for a number of reasons. Okay. One is very historical, um, the fact that mm -hmm. people were already people are already pauperized mm, to start yeah, with and disenfranchised. and disenfranchised. And then you lock them up. You say, you know, um, don't move, no movement. People that depend on, as you said, $2 a day, if they don't go out to hustle, they can't eat the next day. Or so they're half dollar. Um, or whatever. So, so the people are already angry. So 
I think this thing, and, and so many people have talked about it, even in India where they have national lockdown, they're seeing, and they started um, stepping down a little bit and, and, and advocating for what they call a community action. Okay which basically says that at the community level, we identified high-risk areas, yeah. yeah? Do the sampling of testing there to find out what level of exposure there is to the virus in those communities. And then have businesses in those areas sort of limit their movement within the certain community, but allow people to move around within that community as well. So that if there's any infection, it doesn't go out of that community, okay. but allow businesses to go on because you have to take the steps. If, look at people where people that are living in, in, in slums where there are 15 persons to a room or, or face me, I face you, mm -hmm. and there's no electricity, there's lack of water. How do you say lockdown? Mm. If so, if someone gets infected there, it's breeding ground. It's actually a dangerous breeding ground for, for, for the virus. Uh, so I, I th think th uh, there, there has uh, to be uh, cleverness to, in terms to, of how to, the government should do it. Yes, yes um, yeah. I think Jay is waiting to recap or interject on, on this uh, yeah. topic. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I, the reason, I mean, I brought that topic on was because it's just clearly obvious. I mean, in the last uh, few days, um, both myself and my mom have both received text messages from people who ordinarily won't even send messages to us. You know, they're like, like that far removed from us, but they are hungry. They're telling us that their children haven't eaten. You know, you can just imagine a mother with three children, you know, uh, and the child is saying, mommy, I'm hungry. Can you just imagine a scenario like that? And this is a woman that normally would go out, maybe she's a hairdresser, makes her money, comes back, and then all of a sudden, nothing. You know, so it, it really does. And then you can now hear there's so many cases of insecurity going on on the streets, on the road. The other day, I was actually quite scared to go out because I, I went out and I saw like a group of men, you know, walking down the street together. And I didn't know whether they were coming to attack uh, road users or whatever the case may be. But if they did, I wouldn't be surprised because they're hungry. I have people coming to my window begging. Now they're begging very soon. Who knows what it's going to turn into? So what I'm basically advocating for is just telling the, you know, the government that we need to step this thing up. This one of saying that you've given out how many trillions of Naira that nobody can confirm that they've actually done. Well, what's, you know, no, I mean, you can't it, give out palliatives, uh, audio palliatives at this point in time. Now we want some real measures. We need things to happen. Otherwise, we're all sitting ducks, basically. Yeah, that, well, so. That's where I want to take it from. Are we sitting ducks? Because I want to divide uh, at the risk of sounding insensitive. I want to split these hungry men up a bit because I've never really... Well, I can tell I'm you coming, that I'm coming. Let me land the point. Dogs. Because I, I, I have... I, I have I'm coming, quick, uh, Let me land the point. point. I have an issue with when people seem to link a violent and a certain lawless response to, oh, they're justified. Because Boko Haram are justified. Anybody's justified in getting angry. So I'm, I'm, I'm coming. I, I haven't gotten to where I'm going. I haven't gotten to where I'm going. So my point is okay. really to say, yes, I understand. And, and when I make us start talking, I, I could see more of maybe something I could have missed in the way I'm approaching it, in the sense that, mm -hmm. look, that, and when you even started giving examples of people who are approaching you, these people are hungry, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't be in this situation but for the lockdown, let's assume. Mm -hmm. But there's some people who are just opportunists, and let's not try and, let's not try and model it up. Yeah. That those people are going to burn down houses. They're going to, that those people, whether you had lockdown or not, they were not youthful, you profitably engaged. Absolutely. And I'm after those ones. Well, I want yes, them to be the fact brought is, there on that there track. Are I can't be the well, fact is, there are opportunists, that okay. it, but the, the lockdown and the hunger has given them a reason to come out and mix with the people that okay. really I'm, I'm are in yeah, I get what you're saying. trouble. Huh? Yeah. So, yeah, so you can't, you, there's no point trying to differentiate because it's only when you remove the lockdown and give people the freedom to go back okay. to work can we now see these people and okay. say, okay, Expose these people them. are people causing problems. So, like, for instance, now we're sitting back. So I can tell you that in Gowon Estate in Yanapaja, yes, they released a fake video, but I actually got a real uh, verifiable video mm -hmm. of what happened. And people were break, trying to get into those estates. In my estate currently now, we've had to um, bring in the Mopoles and um, armed guards now 
because of the fear that we're going to be under siege at any point. You know, so so it's this real. is a worry. No, and, you, um, you, you, you know, we didn't quickly. cause this problem. So now quickly. how come we're, Uche. we're now the ones handing out the palliatives that the government don't want to hand out? Yeah. And now we're the ones having to protect ourselves at the same time as well. Yeah, but, but I, I, I agree with you. Uh, that's where I want to quickly differentiate yeah, yeah. from what you said, Kenny. Mm. You see, it's also very common for people to assume that it is only those people who do everyday hustling that, you know, are affected. By affected. The no, I, I was affected. No, I know, I know. I had to, because it took me unaware. Yeah. I didn't expect that the banks were going to be shut. No. And I had transaction that has spent money on, expecting payment, and then all of a sudden your client says, oh, look, because of this projection, we can't mm -hmm. release money now. Yeah. Yeah. And then you had to now call your friends who ordinarily would not believe you mm. that look, I know you, you can't you can't be happening to you now. You are a big man now, mm. you know. And here you are. You need to stock up. All of a sudden, your your kids are coming back home, yes. and you are flat-footed. Yes. There are so many people. I reached out. I spoke to some of my friends, and then some of them were even ashamed to speak out their problems. Wow. Senior but lawyers. The reason I'm differentiating is that those ones will not get burned. They won't. Houses, they won't go. Steal. So like, like Uche had said. Some of these persons, the ones who are used to, you've given them opportunity now to say, well, look, even before, that. we used to beg, and then we'll get people. Now there is nobody on the street to beg from. Mm. I can't sit down here and go hungry. Some of them will use such opportunity to say, well, even there are some who will, okay, like a, a friend of mine, a, uh, my, my church people, my, uh, my church, for example, the Service and the Poor Society in my church, needed to buy small bags of rice to share. And do you know when they went to take delivery of those rice, they were almost mobbed by, by um, a group of uh, hangers on. And, and so it, it's, it's, it's real, but I agree with you, it's not a justification for, for crime. But we need to get things right. Uche, good of you to drop in on us. We are certainly all in it together. After the break, some might say, I'm following Uche's footsteps. I love to follow Uche's footsteps, you know. <laughs> is not taken. Soon the poor will have nothing to eat but the rich. It's a saying common to us in Africa because of lack of care for the poor by the rich. But I'm afraid if care is not taken, that saying might soon be a reality than just a white saying. COVID-19 will bring out the beast in all of us. Why it has been argued that the cessation of movement, physical distancing measures and the prohibition of mass gathering remain the most efficient and effective way of reducing the transmission of COVID-19 virus. Can our society and system actually sustain these measures against our current economic and infrastructural reality? Then a jam question for government to answer, not be you. The president in his nationwide address to Nigeria on the 13th of April 2020 answered the question in the affirmative when he admitted that the sustenance of about 75% of Nigeria depend on their ability to go out, as their livelihood depends on their daily hustling. Yet, we are asked to sit at home for another 14 days. And nobody is bothered about our hustling or pay, as even the little we had stuck went bad because of power failure to preserve it. Double jeopardy, you will say. You'll be very shocked to find professionals like medical doctors, lawyers like me, engineers, architecture, among this bracket of hustlers, who depend on daily coins to sustain their livelihood, majority of whom are running SMEs. So don't think it's only tomato or pepper sellers that depend on daily hustling to feed. Despite this awareness and the fact that no country can afford the full impact of a sustained restriction of movement on its economy, countries that are far better than us in terms of economy and infrastructure-wise have locked down. So our federal government, being a product of copy and paste approach to problems, once again impose a further 14 days lockdown in Lagos, Abuja, and Ugu. Because if we find the cure to the virus, they will change our name from Nigeria to something else. So let's mark time for Yibo to get the virus. Hmm. Wow. Well, one is not against any reasonable measure taken by federal government to save lives and properties. It would have been expected that against the reality of the hardship, government should have collaborated more with state government on disbursement of palliatives or give state government a free hand and the needed financial support to treat each case on its own merit, rather than this bad wagon effect of state governors locking down all states once the federal government locked down Abuja and Lagos. Why don't we even have people who think outside the box? This has further exposed our inadequacies and lack of infrastructure. 
where the SME is going to get money to pay salaries for the month of April, when they hardly worked for that month? And is government going to give them palliative to what will be the criteria? And if salaries are not paid, what becomes of workers who for no fault of theirs are asked to stay at home? Can you say they didn't work and so won't get paid? You know, go for new. Also, why should offices that have complete, that were completely shut down for the month of April pay light bill simply because they are on postpaid meter billing? With most bills even estimated, than another kettle when nobody don't even think. If I raise the issue of pay as you go taxes, that one is a whole topic for discussion on another day. Without a social security in place, how do we sustain the poor? Some who are already restless, as arm robbers started attacking you know, some states, as reported in Lagos and Ogo recently. Please don't tell me about the social intervention program of the federal government, as the initial disbursement is still creating a whole lot of controversy, as those who are said to have benefited are yet to receive anything, while those disposing are, are said to be smiling to the bank. No, we talk I'm on a national assembly, go and ask them. I would therefore advocate that we should not only immediately commission our health experts to begin to find the cure, as this can be African supporting to step up to the plate, but to also immediately begin to put social security safety net in place to cushion the effect of hardship that everyday situations such as these impose on the honorary Nigeria. Failure wish. The rich in Nigeria might be surprised very soon that the worst virus is not COVID-19, but the poor who will have nothing left to eat by the rich. To them that have yes, let them hear. Okay, let me take it from our last advocacy, which is, uh, and, and link it to yours. You know, my sister, because she lived in South Africa for a while, she was giving us, you know, the, what looked like, the top, the, what was lying ahead of us. And she said, oh, the people in South Africa are already burning schools. And I said, your people are too angry in South Africa. Every small thing, they burn schools and houses. Very short-sighted. So I get annoyed when people use anger as a reaction, but I sympathize. I'm now saying to myself, okay, those of them who want to be angry, let them be angry. Some of us need to now focus our anger on being constructive. We don't have a welfare state. We've never had. It's not going to manifest overnight. But let's not leave this COVID-19 era and go back to business as usual. Because what it has exposed is that the gap is too wide. The people who don't have, have nothing. And even like you're saying, with this COVID-19, even those who thought they had are slipping into the have-nots. Yes. We need that welfare system to begin to, people need to be drafting it now, campaigning for it. All this nonsense, generator ban bill and rubbish they've wasted our time with. That's not what we need. The country needs health care, you know, bills that ensure that we get a certain minimum amount of investment in our healthcare systems, bills that deal with the weakest link. Because for me, a country is only as great as its weakest link. So widows, um, the poor people, the orphans, the people who are, don't have, they need to have. Those people who are in slums, we need to cater for them. Because if, if we don't do that, I'm sorry, we're not going anywhere. We're going backwards. So let's prioritize that. It's enough of all this buying jeeps to to deal with bad roads, buying generators to deal with bad. We now need to say, what can we do so that at the very minimum, people can have a lifestyle that doesn't make them like animals, where all they can do now is get angry. Uh, imagine, you get angry and then what? It's, the, for me, it's a pointless so, reaction. Sorry, Emeka, yeah. because for me, I'm, I'm looking at the, I'm thinking ahead, looking at the crisis ahead of us. At the end of April, small and medium scale enterprises are going to pay salaries. First, Depending on the mindset of the man who is at top there, oh, these people have not worked. I have not worked. So where do I get money to pay salaries yeah. to these people? Mm. There are some bills that will come, like NEPA bill, bill, electricity. It's all running So tax. where do I get money to pay this? I have not worked. like UK, where they're giving them 80% of so salaries. the palliative the government. that government is giving, government is even telling you that if you don't, if you have up to 5,000 naira, so you are not qualified. Oh my. And, and so this small and medium scale enterprise that is the driver of every economy, yeah. we are, is going to collapse if care is not taken. And so some of the people that are working in these sectors, a lot of them are going to fall down the ladder also. Some of them who are at home now thinking that, you know, some, somebody asked me yesterday, why will, you know, the telecom companies bring out 3 billion naira, for example, to pay wages when they believe that you know majority of these people have not worked. That's a big company. I'm, I'm not sure I like the, that logic. No, no. But I, and I, I told him, I said, look, for you people, we are, we are, we are working because we they are paying, we are recharging our phones. Mm. That's even different. Mm. Somebody like me, I have not worked since, even before the federal government locked down. The, federal, the state government locked down. You know, I had locked down the office. Yesterday, I had to go pay, or day before yesterday, I had to go pay NEPA bill. For, for last month, because I'm on an on, um, uh, estimated billing. Okay. We have been on that back and forth. 
I can imagine some other person and I have staffs to pay at the end of the month. Oh, wow. And so many other people, I can't deny them salaries even though I don't have. Yeah. You know, because, so, you know, so all of this, I expect, I need government to be thinking. So, how do we ensure so, that, so, so this you know, goes back we cushion to, this yeah. gap? So this goes back to, like can I say, it goes back to the discussion we had, uh, the, the last advocacy about uh, Uche's advocacy. A hungry um, man. Uh, the angry, hungry man. Uh, or the hungry, angry man. Yeah, we're also angry. <laughs> um, Don't get it wrong. <laughs> the point is this, and, and I've said this before. We need to let people think solutions. Yes. What we're doing is just reacting to how do we stop the spread. And we, the one track mind we have is, oh, let's isolate social distances. But there are very many other things that we can do because this virus just, just doesn't have consequence on, on, on our health. It also has a, the consequences on the health of our economy. And health of our economy has far more reaching consequences because what will happen is there'll be more suicides, there'll be more people out of work, there'll be more people who will fall sick because of, they don't even have access to health care, generally speaking. So, I mean, on the palliative side, you know, I read the CBN intervention, 50 billion for SMEs, but that's a drop in the ocean to start with. And it's not even a, oh, it's right not a grant. Yeah. We don't it's, know it's how actually, they get it It's actually SMEs. a loan. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, it's actually loaned, but you know, low interest loans. There's another 100 billion that the CBN has set aside um, uh, for healthcare industry as well. Um, we just wanted it to get so, to the right people but, though. <laughs> but the question is, there has to be a holistic plan for how to deal with this problem. Um, beyond, uh, because oil, as, as Libera said, has dropped Monica. to on the 30s. So we have a major crisis coming at us, coming, you know, full, full steam ahead. I think there has to be more discussions. We need a national leadership to step up to, you know, the, the, the biggest challenge. Or delegates. Yeah, the <laughs> biggest challenge like this in any economy is not really, it's, it's, it's a feeling of confidence. Um, that's what makes people spend. That's what builds yeah. positive momentum. And when people, you're just hearing the anger and the, the negative vibes, but we need to have someone, and I, I hope that the vice president, who I think is one of the more, more cerebral, cerebral yeah, yes. more should step should up. This is time he should step up and be more, talk to the people more. Yeah. When um, you're having serious minded discussions like this, and it's over before it began, you may be thinking. we back again. Next week, same time, same channel. Do keep your comments coming on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram, at Plus TV, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com, forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next time, let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they want. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What well, I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's it, it does. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.